Assalamualaikum everyone. Thank you so much for joining us in this particular edition of uh, the individual reviews. We're still working on the long review actually, the one about the literature set in British India, the subcontinent, fiction, non-fiction and all those aspects related to it, a guideline on all of those aspects. But we've made progress in it. Having said that, this is going to be one of those individual reviews just to keep pace with the, with the work that we've already finished up over the years. And work here referring to books that have been donated to our organization by our patrons, by our sponsors, by individuals, by those who liked and subscribed the channel and commented on our videos and said that the, these aspects should be given weight. So we are thankful to all of you. Sincerely, we are thankful to all of you for all that you have done to help us in this cause. And today's video is going to be just a continuation of it, whilst keeping in mind that we need to improve on the formula that we have, the presentation formula overall. So keeping that in mind, today's video is going to be about St. George. <laughs> I know, right? A brown person talking about English history and all the aspects related to related to King George of all people or Saint George. Well, this is actually a very interesting little book. It's historical. It's actually an account of how. Well, as you can see, the colors over here are similar to the colors that the English team wears whenever there's a World Cup going on. So. This covers that aspect. Where did the St. George cross come from? What was the myth associated with him? Essentially, it's the tale goes, the legend has it, that St. George was endowed with abilities by God in order to free the angles from the clutches of a dragon that roamed in that area. Hence, this. So he conquered the dragon and gave the people an opportunity to become, you know, Angles, Englanders or English. And over time, he's basically a, he's basically become a morphed over time because of the disassociation that people make um, since, well, it's politically incorrect to use the English, the St. George flag because of its association with the right wing. And I don't, I don't, I get where the, where that uh, political correctness comes from. And yet I respect Giles Morgan for actually talking about it, genuinely looking into the history and going as far as he did in emphasizing that, yes, there is a lot of aspects to it. There's more to it than what meets the eye. And the overall, like, take for instance, take for instance its association at the time of, um, at the time of the English influence, Richard the, Richard the Lionheart, after all, used the English colors, St. George was the flag that he carried with him. So, just a small little excerpt. The Crusader army reached Antioch in the autumn of 1097 after a difficult and dangerous overland journey across Asia Minor. Not only was Antioch a city of religious and spiritual importance, but because of its proximity to the port of St. Simon and the coastal region, it also held strategic and military value. On arrival, the crusading army, which was made up of a combined force of mainly French or Frankish groups, was led by a variety of Christian princes and nobles. All this entire aspect, some began to deserve before the arrival of an English fleet Bolstered their, bolstered their supplies and resolve. Eventually, a traitor within the Antioch garrison agreed to let the crusaders in at night by lowering a ladder from the city walls. A group of knights entered in this way and then let in the main crusading army through the gates of the city. The soldiers destroyed the garrison and Armenian Christians sympathetic to the cause of the crusaders beheaded the Turkish governor. The capture of Antioch was particularly timely because a much larger, better provisioned Turkish army 
led by Cordova, was on its way to assist the beleaguered garrison. Many crusaders left the city after its capture, fearful of the oncoming forces of Cordova and the previously sympathetic Byzantine Empire withdrew an offer of aid. The Christian army in Antioch was depleted in numbers and in a sorry state. Those that remained were weakened by hunger and many were suffering from disease and illness. The future for the crusaders at Antioch looked grim, but their spirits were lifted by a peasant called Peter Bartholomew, who claimed to have been visited in a vision by Saint Andrew. And then they talk about how uh, the spear of destiny was... Uh, to those who don't know, the spear of destiny refers to the Roman spear that had pierced through Jesus at the time when Jesus was crucified. So it was essentially done to emphasize the Roman uh, mindset that, look, Jesus is dead. We, are, we have poked him with a spear and we confirm indeed that he is in fact dead. So that's where uh, Peter Bartholomew comes in, and over the course of time, over the course of time, and we, it then proceeds onwards to talk about how Saint George was, uh, how an army of Saint George was followed, and how it actually came into being as you know a fundamentally important aspect. Oh, incidentally. The ho uh, just reading again from it. The Holy Lance itself was carried into battle and the Crusaders, believing that a spectral army led by St. George, attacked Karboga's forces from the nearby hills. St. George was also said to have been accompanied in his charge against the Turks by St. Maurice, St. Theodore and St. Demetrius and other important soldier saints of the early Christian era. Miraculously, the Muslim army began to turn and flee and the Crusaders drove them from the field as is the case with all things related to the medieval period, one should proceed to consider it with a grain of salt. Although it is true that Antioch was a Muslim defeat. It was one of the many associations that is made with the First and Second Crusades. And definitely recommended if you could get this book. It gives a lot of insight into how uh, like as I told earlier about the Armenians, right? How the Armenians sympathetic to the cause of the Crusaders fought against the Turk, the Turks, and it gives you an insight into the events that eventually led to the genocide of the Armenians in uh, the First World War. The controversial aspects pertaining to it. On paper, we say that the Armenians were massacred in a significant number, which again is technically true if multiple people are repeating that same point again and again and again and if they emphasize it multiple times then it stands to reason that it must be true and if they're saying it then there must be evidence to show that yes it is fundamentally true so there is a there is there is some element to the roots of why that happened as it happened and in that context definitely recommend it especially if you want to do your research on the crusades and if you are wanting to understand how the how the societies were structured and why the crusades happened as they did it's definitely a good while it only talks about saint george in the context of all the history that happens, it is definitely a good book as well if you want to have a reference for giving more weight and ethos to your to your work relating to the Crusades. So definitely recommend it that you give this a look and also works that are published on archive.org. Do support open libraries. Make sure that you don't just let them go away. Because the fact of the matter is if you and I, like I personally believe that all public domain works should be made public domain. They must be allowed to be used by everyone, whether it's research, whether it's curiosity, whether it's just finding out the truth. It doesn't matter. Even if it is 
pure nostalgia or if even if it is preservation and the emphasis being on preservation it is necessary to support these causes because if you don't do that then lies spread and once lies spread they slowly become a truth take we'll talk about it in the context of india just as an example uh, the black hole of calcutta right that was used as a driving force for the english to pursue their campaign of conquest and hence imperial doctrines as a result of which british india was made uh, it was the basis for the the entire clive of india aspect in the warren hasting era east india company so if it had not been for all these documents that were easily available and allowed to be researched we'd still run on the assumption that the black hole of Cal- calcutta happened and most of us would have just mandela affected ourselves into assuming that it happened even though it didn't so whilst it's good to buy books whilst it's good to have online references do support your public domain works as well such that you could you and i and everyone else who's a content creator everyone else who's a historian and who's a student and who's pursuing life as is even to find out about yourself it's important to have these open access books available and with that i thank you for your time i thank you for watching this video and i thank you for considering the works that we are doing over here and we look forward to your comments to you sharing whatever you think about libraries in general especially in Pakistan and particularly in your area take care